stretched along the Mississippi River in the southeastern region of Louisiana is the city of New Orleans, known for its music, food, and festivals, frequented by millions of tourists every year, making Mardi Gras one of the biggest cultural events in America. With close to 400,000 residents, New Orleans is the most populated city in Louisiana and home to some of the most notorious street figures in the history of Louisiana. Raised by his mom, a single parent in the Ninth Ward, Florida Projects to be exact, at the age of 12, Darrell's mother would move into a home on Pauline Street. Darrell would have four siblings. His sister and her best friend would both lose their lives at Jellystone National Park, located in Nuala, Texas. They would both drown. And Pila Hatchie police confirmed the little girl's death this evening. Chief Joseph Daughtry says they're not releasing the girl's name until more family members have been notified. The drowning happened in a swimming pool at Yogi Bear's Jellystone Park in Pila Hatchie. The spokesman for the park says they are cooperating with local investigators as they work to figure out exactly what happened. The park spokesman says the entire Jellystone Park family extends their deepest sympathies to the family and to everyone impacted by this tragic event. His brother will be murdered. Darrell would attend Lockett Elementary School in his younger years. In Darrell's teen years, he would attend Alfred Lawless, George Washington Carver, and Frederick Douglass, a.k.a. Nichols. Darrell would never finish school as he would catch a juvenile bid for stolen cars, weed charges, and other probation violations. Upon Darrell's release, his mother would be living on Gallier Street, a.k.a. the G-Strip. In 97, Darrell would jump in the game. His first product would be that green, which he pumped until 2003. In 04, Darrell would graduate to that hard. He would score from Lee World Price's brother, Kowazi, out the D. Darrell would pump 20s and flippers in the Florida. It wouldn't be long before Darrell would relocate to Cindy Place Apartments in the New Orleans East. It was there that he would start moving bigger weight, copying from June. Darrell would partner with Plucky. The two would have a rock house on Cindy Place. Plucky wasn't the only night war dude from the streets that Darrell knew. Lloyd Curry, a.k.a. Slugger, who was older than Darrell, attended school with Darrell's sister. Slugger was known for home invasions and hustling, but his M.O. was murder. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina was slammed through the city, leaving Darrell stranded on top of his apartment roof for three days. Feltis, a crooked cop with the NOPD, would spot Darrell and attempt to arrest him. Darrell would bust at him with the cutter. Feltis and his partner would turn around and leave. The fire department would eventually rescue everyone from the roof. Upon hitting dry land, Darrell would pop up a truck and slide to ATL. Once in Atlanta, Darrell would scam Red Cross out of 30 racks and another 16 racks from FEMA. Darrell would not spend all the loot. Three months later, he would return to the NO and cop a whip, moving in with his pops on the West Bank. Temporarily working with a subcontractor, cleaning up debris left behind from the storm, Darrell would later quit upon receiving an insurance check from his vehicle that got damaged in the storm. With the 15 racks from the insurance company, Darrell and Slugger would cop a half a brick of soft from Texas. This would be a one-time thing as Darrell would start scoring from Kuwaiti again. It's late 2006 at the time and Darrell would still be moving at Christina. Slugger would try his hand at pushing that dog food before Darrell. Darrell would intercept a cross that was thrown between Slugger and B out of Florida. B, who was living in Texas at the time, had the plug on that boy. Slugger would get his work from B. In 2007, B would send a zip of the 11.5 to Darrell. Moving faster than the coke, Darrell decided that this would be his new hustle. The profits from the 11.5 were booming. Every time Slugger would go to Texas to cop, he would bring back a zip for Darrell. This would be an every other week thing. It wouldn't be long before Slugger would go from 2 0s to a 9. Not happy with the way Slugger was transporting the work, Darrell would suggest that Slugger use the Greyhound. Slugger would enlist the services of a female who would go with the move on Slugger and run off with the work. The year is 2007. Slugger would have to turn himself in to do a jokes for a home evasion that he pulled off. Breezy would continue to cop while Slugger was locked up, using Gregory Stewart, a.k.a. Rabbit, to dip on the Greyhound. 14 or 15 years old at the time, Rabbit would be paid $500 a trip from Breezy. In 2008, a drought would hit. V would mess up the money. 
Breezy, who was getting a nine at the time, would then link up with Merle and cop a half a brick. The next cop would never happen. Dudes from Texas would go with the move on B and run off with the bread. Breezy would be forced to cop from Merle's connect. Merle, who was spooking up Slugger, wanted to put a bag on his head. While Slugger was joking, Merle and Breezy would chop it up about Slugger. It was agreed that Slugger would be a problem and needed to be offed. Merle and Breezy would plot on Slugger when he came home. Breezy, rapping and Slugger would attend a concert. The plan was to smash Slugger that night. This never did happen as Breezy didn't want to crush Slugger in his BM's whip. What would happen next would raise red flags. Unable to contact B, who would be holding a four of dog food for him, Slugger would ask Breezy where he was. Breezy, who would refuse to give Slugger's B's whereabouts, was coming across as shady. This would put Slugger on alert and he would be on his game. Gregory Stewart, aka Rabbit, would be released and get caught in the middle of the Merle, Breezy, and Slugger drama. They all wanted Rabbit to pick sides. Ultimately, Rabbit would run with Merle and Breezy after being given 10 racks and some work. Being more advanced than the rest of the dudes his age, Breezy would wing Rabbit. Let's fast forward to 2009. Merle, who was cool with Kenrick Rodney, aka Lil Man, would have Breezy front Lil, a nine of that boy, to put him back on his feet. The pair would later cop four birds of yay from Texas and front them to Lil. Lil was always good when bringing back the bread, which made the relationship solid. McCoy Walker, a.k.a. Rat, would be the first off 3 g besides Lil that Breezy would front. Rat, who would always come short with the bread, racked up a $13,000 debt with Breezy. Breezy would cut his water and start hollering at Terrius Oni, a.k.a. T-Red, who would jam with Rabbit. Let's take a trip back downtown to the G-Strip. Bernard Carsey, whom Breezy thought was cool, would send empty threats his way. Word on the streets was Bernard, who was low-key, Running with Slugger was going to crush Breezy. Upon hearing these empty threats, Breezy would set Bernard up to come to the G-Strip and cop at 11.5. Breezy would hit at him 30 times with the 223. One of Breezy's BMs, who was an NOPD dispatcher at the time, would hit Breezy's cell informing him that his name just flew over the dispatch for a shooting. Breezy's mom doors would be kicked in. Breezy would later turn himself in for the crime and bond out. Bernard, who survived the shooting, would later be locked up for a home invasion, which Breezy would bond him out for in exchange for hiring him an attorney. Breezy would get credit for time served on the charge. The crew would be hanging on the G-Strip when Gutter, Co, and Boat would come through, busting, crushing, Cheddar, and Gucci. Merle, Rabbit, and Breezy would catch up with Gutter as Co and Boat were stashing the tools and crush him. Merle would accidentally hit Rabbit in the arm. A failed attempt at smashing Slugger would occur. In the process, G-Strip Baby would lose his life. This would be in Slugger's favor, three to one. Three dudes off the strip had been murked. Gutter, the only op to get pilled. Before the downtown boys would link with 3 and G, Breezy would crush Pig. Pig was hitting the stash, setting Breezy's workers up to get Jack. He had to pay the price. Late that night, Breezy would lay low under a house on the strip. Going unnoticed and allowing Pig to walk by, Breezy would roll from under the house and hit Pig in the face, stand over him, and crush him. It wouldn't be long before Merle would retire from the game. A lavish party would be drawn for Merle at the Sports View. People from all over the city would attend. Breezy, trying hard to break into the music industry, would put money behind the artist on Dusty Money Entertainment. Breezy would link with Meek Mill as Dusty Money would open for one of his New Orleans shows. The G-Strip bars were pumping and the block was hot. Rabbit would be the first to get picked up due to a wiretap. It wouldn't be long before Breezy would be apprehended. They both would cooperate with the government. It is rumored that both Breezy and Rabbit made up testimony to get 5K1 letters for their cases.
last year. Three members of the 39ers gang were convicted of killing Marshall when they learned he was cooperating with federal agents. It is rumored that both Breezy and Rabbit have been released under the federal FBI protection program under new identities. The internet has been wiped clean of their federal records. In fact, they are both nowhere to be found in the online federal criminal history database.